Hello everyone, my name is Adredden and I am in Seven Days to Die. I just wanted to kind of close out my single player game. So I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of my castle. It is de facto done. I wanted to get it a lot more done, but unfortunately it is too big. Too many, too much painting, too much uh, everything else. So it needs to be de facto done. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of go over some of the features that I tried to incorporate with it and kind of mention some names that have helped along the way. It's uh, been a mega project of mine ever, I don't know, probably since uh, Alpha 16.2, I think. Basically, I created a single player game and kind of went from there. Um, I really have to keep an eye out on this thing. It's um, a bit crazy and my frame rate drops quite a bit now that it's so huge. Um, I think as long as I'm not painting, we should be able to see most of this thing. But you can see right now because everything is so close in, um, it's kind of starting to close, kind of stutter a little bit. So it's uh, not really great. Okay, anyway, let's start uh, talking about the features. So this here is sort of uh, the gatehouse and I guess the main tower. Um, just due to the size, it was a full Higashi tower. Um, and so we're gonna go in and take a closer look at the features down there. But um, let's see here. I watched a lot of videos on castles, primarily from uh, Shadowversity. And I took a lot of the ideas about castle design from there and went with it. So yeah, it's all kind of getting built up. And this is uh, the Dan Phoenix. He uh, helped me quite a bit on this particular side of the castle. This building here was to well, almost totally destroyed by some by a horde. And then uh, I was building this wall and he helped out. It's one of the more interesting wall types on this uh, castle. It's really good for fighting hordes on this particular side of the castle. And um, yeah, whoa, building. So, and up here we have a new tower that I've built, but I mean, it's not fully furnished or anything. There's only a couple of rooms that are really done on the inside. It's just there's no more time before Alpha 17. And it is, um, yeah, it's just, it's too big. There's too much stuff going on. So, and if we go in here, uh, you see everything is whitewashed. This is a historic feature of castles, kind of more of the people who have more rich castles, more opulent castles. Uh, this is Dark Mist Tower, if we can get through these trees. Dark Mist is an up and coming YouTuber. She's uh, got her own channel. It's awesome. And uh, let's go in here. She painted all this. I'm supposed to change the D, to add that to a D, but we'll, uh, we'll come back for this. I guess we'll kind of talk about some of the features. Um, so here you see that it's got battlements along the whole way with the Merlons and Crenels making up the crenellations here. Uh, I gave them some red highlights. Um, if you kind of gum through here, you can see the machicolations is what these are called and they are good for allowing people to shoot down at uh, any sort of people who might be trying to take out your castle um, along here. So yeah, and I just sort of added this because it was part of the Higashi Tower already. You may recognize this area sort of right down, I guess it would be there. That's usually where the um, chest of ammo and stuff is. If you're a uh, if you've watched the entire Alpha 16 series, you'll notice that this building is actually um, my first base. It's my kind of keep. And yeah, it's finally basically done. I mean, it's got battlements on multiple floors and it's got lots of real zombie defense that I truly did use. Um, it's questionable. So the castle design is... Um, 
partly to keep in mind what I was going to do, like if humans attacked as well as zombies, uh, even though there's no real humans in it, this is based entirely off of what real castles were like for human defenses. Um, and, you know, part of that is these battlements that face inward. Um, if this uh, bailey here was taken, this area here with all the trees, it would uh, be able to be, you know, defended and whatnot from these battlements up here on facing inward. Uh, and there's a couple of castles in real life that don't have that kind of thing. And especially in video games, it's generally pretty lacking. People don't really realize that. Not to mention, I guess if we go a little bit closer, we can see here that this is actually half cover and full cover. So that if you were to stand behind these crenelles, or the merlons, I suppose, the upper parts, the taller parts, they would fully protect you from an attack on the other side, uh, assuming you were at the right angle. And I wasn't quite sure exactly which way to build these little um, machicolations here. These machicolations, they are three wide in most places. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Some places probably have one by one. Each one of these blocks, for anybody who isn't really into seven days to die, is supposed to be one meter. And so it is, um, you know, a fair bit of size and... You know, it's it's questionable, I don't know, which way to kind of go with all these different blocks. But anyway, that's what I did with that. Um, these walls that I made here, these are probably way too big um, for some, you know, because the thing is, I guess most castle walls, ideal thickness is at least two meters to kind of defend against uh, getting destroyed by, you know, various siege weaponry and whatnot. Whereas these walls uh, look to be five meters thick in a sense. And I'll explain that later. At the base, they're actually only two meters of reinforced concrete. Um, and then a little bit up, upper in the upper areas, they are one meter thick. And uh, it's just because I just, you know, didn't have time to finish it. I was, I have tons of cement. And the reason I have tons of cement is because I built this gigantic moat. Um, in the game, there's a thing called an auger, and I use an auger to dig the crap out of this place. Um, I don't know, at some point, like around day 100 to 200 or something, I was primarily doing that. Um, we'll have to go a little bit deeper just to show some of the features here. Uh, there's a little bit of weird jiggy jogs kind of happening over here because of this dragon. Um, I guess we'll show the dragon right now because we're right here. So uh, this was an idea I had in Alpha 15. My idea was to actually give the whole, to give this thing a whole skeletal body, make it a, or or give it a real body and have it extend back into that bailey back there, and I don't know, just make a cool art piece. As is, it is um, pretty cool. I think it worked out fairly well. Um, Dark Miss once again. The amazing helper she is, uh, you should also go check out her channel, is uh, responsible for the texture. I didn't, I don't know why, but I totally had forgotten about it. And um, she painted the vast majority of this thing, so it is pretty great that she did that for me. Um, definitely, definitely happy that she did that. Um, one issue I know if you're a castle aficionado would be that this area is a bit, um, hmm, how should we say, vulnerable? Uh, and in real life, I think what I would do is I would take this tower here, extend the castle wall across over to this building, incorporate these two buildings, at the very least, right, I would do this, and uh, come back along this wall over here so that that was at least incorporated into the building um so but i didn't uh have time this is uh where i first started the game and sort of hung out here a lot uh had lots of horde battles along uh ingle street and that there is cedar those are different subscribers of mine who have, who are pretty com 
there have commented quite a bit. Um, this year is the Fracka Book Tower, and there's definitely been a lot of good stuff happening in there. This is where we got our experimental pieces for our auger, and uh, yeah, it was good times. I really enjoyed doing that. I'm probably do more of that in time. Um, okay. So if we go down, 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 down. So it's so big, this castle, that during the daytime, I don't know if I'll actually be able to get daytime shots because it creates so much lag that I don't know if I can get it to work. Okay. Um, and I think it's just due to the painting and the all these different things. Because this is a door, there used to be spikes pretty much all the way around it, but it constantly gets attacked by things falling down, because not all zombies die after falling 32 meters down. Um, cause some of them are just really strong, because that's sort of the way the fun pimps wanted it. The uh, company who made the game. If we just go down, I'm not so great using this control scheme, but uh, and we can't open doors unless we uh, Kind of go like this. We have to go into actual this mode. But um, here's just a, like a little entrance that uh, sort of like a little mm, kill room, I suppose, for anybody who might get in here. Because uh, this is, you know, in possibly some vital point where people can get into. So yeah, you can uh, use these little arrow slits to go in there and poke at people or shoot at people. Um, you can climb up this ladder a smidgen. And onto this little platform, which uh, has murder holes. Now, this is a bit weird because, um, you know, trying to design a castle like this is one thing, but in an apocalypse and after... Oh, we need to change the time. Like I said, I have to keep it nighttime at least for now. Uh, I will hopefully be able to do some daytime shots, but it's questionable because the RAM on the server goes up, 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 till, like, till they stop doing it. Like 15, 16, and then they cut it off. Because um, there's some sort of bug somewhere with something. I don't know what it... So if the Fun Pimps ever do see this, maybe they can take a look at this particular world and see what's causing it. Um, or maybe it'll be fixed in Alpha 17. Oh, someone added spikes here. Wow. Uh, okay, so I also should mention that um, so all these spikes I created legit, uh, and the actual vast majority of this castle was built uh, in just normal survival mode. This is a survival mode build, and uh, these spikes here are not, and that's because in, during this last uh, week or so, just because it's like Alpha 17 could be out, uh, you know, this was... Um, Holy cow, who the heck put these down? I'm guessing Dark Mist put them in here. It's good though. Um, anyways, this is what should be done, um, which is great because those zombies, they like to come in here and get you. Maybe, maybe I can do a Horde Knight, like the day, the one year Horde Knight. We'll see. These are probably screamers. They run over and fall down and they'd mostly die. But as you can see, the zombies do like to smash the heck out of these because there's a lot that survive and come down here. Um, yeah, so one of the things I was going to do and can't exactly is put in a bunch of these shotgun turrets. And yeah, this drops my frame rate a little bit. This is why I guess I've been doing it like this. Anyway, they drop the frame rate a little bit. And once again, yeah, see? fell down and is dead, which is great. That's why you need a moat. Um, once again, this has got that whole... It doesn't have the murder hole on the top, but it does have these side little areas. This is a, a tunnel that kind of goes from one side of the build to another, um, all the way over to here. And it goes down into the moat over on that side, and there's one that goes up here, and then there's the one over here. This one here isn't actually fully connected to this tunnel network, and it's just because of the way that the progression that I built it. I would have connected it, it's just that there's no more time with the way the server has been acting. 
Um, this corner here has been attacked a lot of times. Uh, Dan Phoenix sometimes spent his night up there, and uh, this is actually totally fine. Um, you can spend at least one Horde Knight uh, in the castle and, and then come down and repair it, and you're fine. I mean, there's a lot of damage done if you don't actually come down here and fight them. But it is actually possible to survive a Horde Knight down here. Um, so, yeah, because they just tunnel into the dirt and it's, you know, not too bad. Uh, if you were living here during the zombie apocalypse, I think you would probably eventually just fill this whole thing up with uh, cement and be fine. And I think, like I was saying, shotguns up here, pointing down, would be probably one of the best things you could possibly do for this moat because shotguns in this game do a lot of terrain damage. So they would also continually erode the dirt away. Uh, unlike in real life where you would just have a ditch full of lead. <laughs> and... Did I leave that open? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, she painted this. Cool. Man, I like this texture. He's getting darn good at painting. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that looks really nice. Sorry, <laughs> I just haven't seen this. Um, these are all storage boxes that I was using. At some point, I was just sick and tired of running back to the keep to deposit stuff. But as you can see, like... I didn't even use the vast majority of the material that I gathered from this place. It was just too much. All of these rock, all of these were filled with rocks and iron. Um, I have plenty of resources, so in Alpha 17 and beyond, I'll I have plans to dig like, uh, bases out as I go, just to have the resources to build. And I think that's a really good strategy in this game, but. Anyway, most of this just keeps going along, and it's pretty much all the same. But you can see this wall here is a bit different, where I brought it straight up and brought the, the uh, thing, the wall up from this wall all the way up. From the moat. Yeah. All right, I've just been running around the Dark Mist Tower. By the way, this whole thing, uh, I, the castle, I'm naming it Castle White. Not because it is painted white, and I didn't paint it white per se because uh, of the... The reason castles like i said were historically white but um one of my first patreons is actually um one of the her names is white and so it's a little homage to that uh and my second patreon is dark miss so she gets dark miss tower dan phoenix of course helped a ton and he actually built most of that one building back up so uh he gets wow Look what zombies can do over time in this game. Ugh, screamers. At this point, I just, I'm killing them all just because I just have to get this tour done. And there's, the entities take up space on the server's RAM and that's just not good. Um, anyways, they both helped a ton and I'm so grateful for their help. Anyway, this uh, should all be upgraded to polished steel. And the zombies are so destructive, they've destroyed this multiple times. And um, yeah, but that connects over to that other central hub over there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Anyway, that's enough of this area. So we'll just take this tunnel and go into the uh, inner guts of this castle, I guess. So for this whole video, it'll be sometime around day 354 because of uh, how it is. Um, should we show you the boring part first? So down here, this is down to bedrock. I have a little mini bike, and this has actually been where I've been spending my late game hordes. So if you go back, you'll see my earlier videos. There was um an issue with the way that my bitrate was set, so they're not actually as clear as some of these ones are. And that's uh unfortunate, but anyway. I used this mini bike to go down this enormous tunnel that I've dug. Now this tunnel goes... Uh, from here all the way to there underground and this is a great place to spend horde night because in alpha 16 and below uh, the zombies cannot attack the ground or if they do it's not a big deal anyway uh, from above you can actually see what I've done here there's this tunnel that goes all the way to that where I was uh, below the towers you can barely see um, but yeah this is my forge room I spent 
a lot of time filling these things up making these ones are generally made to be making steel or iron these ones are almost all cement and then i usually drive my mini bike in and around here and uh, yeah and then i was gonna make this other little escape tunnel continue on all the way 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 over here um can we go up and take a look do, 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 do. well anyway if you see there's a river just over there and that was going to be sort of a, an escape route that I had. Um, ideally with a submarine, but you know, I don't, I'm fine with it. It was just some sort of weird little grate that was hidden away in some bushes or something. So here's what you can see real quick. Ah, there we go. It's gone. This used to be the Joe's brother building. And uh, so, but now it's not. <laughs> I've done something entirely different with it. Um... Oh, we're still in creative? Okay. There's so many features in this castle, I doubt I can show you them all. Um, I don't want, literally know what I'm going to sh uh, show. Um, this was built to repair the uh, those blade traps above, and they don't really work so much anymore. This is all connections for the wires up top. Um, over here we had these trip wires, uh, which triggered these dart traps, which fired down here, and there's also these electric fences. So they work pretty darn well, uh, but once again, I, for a base this size, it was tricky to get everything built in time, so yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, I guess I should talk about this, because this is a weird area. Now, I guess in a real castle, against humans you would never do this and I don't even know that this defense is gonna work very well in Alpha 17 because of the toothy design the way the ragdolling works and stuff anyway they kind of will probably well anyway you fight them here rah, and these blade traps turn on and they kind of you know shred them a little bit but this is kind of the, the one of the few finished areas now I didn't really put in spikes down here and as you can see, this is where you can reach up if you had multiple people and you can repair these as the night goes on. Um, but then anyway, here, the zombies will be on here. Their legs will get chopped out. They'll fall into their tummies and then these things will continue to chop them up. And if, once these break down, uh, the zombies might run up here and get their head height, get some decaps happening. And these ones here, um, there's a plate here, which lifts them up just a little bit. And I'm not quite sure if it's quite enough to get hit by this one. Uh, I might need a slightly bigger block right here to have it work better. But anyway, that's sort of the thing. And then those are all on as you're kind of mashing zombies through here. Um, I put these in because I was thinking, you know what, if there was an actual human assault, you could kind of, you know, fight these guys, pop up, fire some weapons, you know, something like that. Yeah, some nice crenellations for, you know, mostly protection and stuff, but it's, um, I don't know, we're working to, you know, progress kind of uh, experimental idea. It's, uh, and it's not too bad, really, for when you're just kind of going through the game. Yeah. Uh, these spikes are here to stop zombies from climbing over, like the spider zombies. That's, uh, yeah, pretty tricky thing. Uh, there's multiple layers of defense here, so if the zombies were to break through here, I could always retreat back into here, and hopefully like into this area or something, and the zombies would come fight me here, and then back again, and there's another layer of retreat back into here. So yeah, lots of layers of defense on this thing. Alright, floor by floor, well, not all the floors are very amazing. Lots of uh, murder holes, so even if... Um, I guess there should have been a hatch here, but I just never got to it, and I can't. I, I could, I guess, put one more block in. It's not going to break the server, but I just need, to, I think, to get this out. Um, so I do understand and recognize that there should be something there. This area would be blocked off in time. Um, probably maybe put some stairs in here or something. I don't know. Anyway, most of this building is using ladders at the moment, and I don't think I'll get a chance to do much more with it. So, yeah, lots of murder holes. So if some enemies were to get in here you could have your people who live here help defend against them by shooting downwards and stuff now there's a shotgun turret here that is also to help kill off zombies that get in here and or humans that get in there and fight these are the blade traps 
are the dart traps that fire down as you you know fight down there um, these blocks are here to help sleepers and if you're new to the game that's just those guys who spawn inside the bases uh, all the time when you enter them but this is an attempt to stop them and it kind of works sometimes not always most of the time it doesn't the electrical system in here generally involves uh, generators uh, that split off onto each side back to different battery banks this battery bank powers this quarter of the base and this one this quarter uh, so that you have a bunch of well these are these is pretty power intensive on horde night uh, i should have mentioned also that each one of these sets is controlled by this motion sensor to reduce power consumption so that it only you know these two here are only on if this here detects the zombies and i think it detects it in sort of this little arc right here and then this one over here which does these two well it would actually be more because i was going to add more under, under each one of these little fingers but yeah um hasn't quite fully been done and this i was going to replace and fill it finish off like this because this looks pretty decent plus you can upgrade these all the way to polished steel which is a huge amount of damage whereas these are like 100 hit points or 200 hit points more sleeper spots that i tried to cover up these actually this does this doesn't work uh just so you know zombies can spawn on top of this they'll like sit down right on there and stuff it's really weird but they're there okay anyhow this side here is a little bit more powered by some solar which i just started but we'll get there this is my main floor where i spend a lot of my time in the game this is actually concrete um yeah i don't think i filled in that window yet no anyways i do want to thank all of these people for their help over this you know alpha it's been great um pal and s'more i did a lot of multiplayer with jill white the main first um oh she painted the roof too um patreon that i had um trekker and wharf for just uh well they donated some and wharf helped uh or he you popped in here and i've done some multiplayer with him and he's a great guy overall um dave stout also donated some money um dan phoenix of course helped build that one building dark miss is uh helped me paint well pretty much this whole place and uh only coop i spent a lot of time in um well learning a bit of a base design for gna horde mode so yeah it's all good dan also did a lot of the organization in here i have a particular style of organization and i'm not sure many people appreciate it and that is okay uh the view from sort of this main floor this is not ever intended to be the final layout for this floor but we should talk about it so this is here just to protect this main keep from this entrance this is, i used to go in and out of this way over towards the bookstore and out on that side of the castle um but it's not exactly done over there anymore now, there's a little bit of a patio down here for people just to hang out on we'll go see there's only one really finished apartment we'll go check that out soon but we have this big old door if I can get it closed. There's no big three high doors in the game, but I thought that would I thought that would look kinda cool to do this, so yeah. I don't know, it works not too badly. Okay, so in here we have dart traps, and this is to, you know, any invading army uh, would come in here, they would get some darts. They have to protect themselves. This uh, splits the army up. It slows them down, uh, and they are welcomed to shotgun turrets flanking them, and arrow slots so that anybody can uh, you know shoot them through there. There's also these little uh, I don't know arrow slots slash murder hole things up here from the next floor, so that uh, also a bit more of a takedown there, which is great. I think more shotgun turrets to be installed that uh, didn't won't get installed. Then another door that ideally would be, you know, super thick and hard to break through. Um, yeah, which would be a pretty nasty way to go. And then this is the main ladder that goes up and down the entire building. Um, I had contemplated putting stairs in, um, but it won't happen now. So 
These are actually storage boxes. I guess they got painted a bit. Oh well, no worries. These bars are just kind of so you can come out here and shoot down on things, but they also do add, I think, a little bit of a problem in that they are possibly something that people could use to, um, you know, use a grappling hook, because it's like, yeah, and then kind of climb up and get up here. But then you also have to contend with this sort of defense up here, and there's no doors on these yet. They would have had probably at very least iron doors. But that's not going to happen. Anyway, that's sort of mirrored over here, this sort of splitting up of uh, defenses. Because I was going to make a walkway over to this building. It hasn't happened. Won't happen. Um, so, I don't know. It's sort of the way it is. Storage is up here. This will probably also be a bit of a barracks where people would live. Maybe put a few more murder holes down in this area so that this lower area was a little more protected, but this is, you can see down here between the doors where that was. Um, these are the little uh, arrow slots. You can't see, you know, crazy far into there, but uh, you know, every little angle that might, you might get some bad guys picked off is probably a good one. Over here, if they're trying to batter the door down on the outside, you can take them out here. And these are the these are probably the first machicolations. Oh, no, this is the second set of machicolations I ever built. They made up these bars, and these bars work fine against zombies, weak zombies. But if you're playing something like GNA Horde mode, which is very intense, that is when I started using the quarter block machicolations like this. Um, which, I don't know. I guess in real life, you would probably put some sort of bars or something in here so that somebody didn't fall through. Because this is. Each block is 50 centimeters, or 100 centimeters wide, so a yard-ish wide, um, making this, I don't know, foot and, foot and a half or something wide. So you could fall through there, idea, in real life, but yeah, this didn't get quite finished here, but that's okay. This is a weird set of matriculations, or battlements on this little turret. This is a, I don't know if it's actually called a turret if it's not elevated above this floor. I think there's another name. Um proper doors to go in and out so you can block off this whole little area I'm gonna put more trees and stuff in but meh not gonna happen uh, yeah so this is this little area that Dan built you can see right through the castle there which is interesting I think it's pretty neat oh, this is my garden down here that I was growing paint in but it takes a long time to grow so like I said during the last um, I probably painted 25-ish percent of this place um, by hand and then uh, because of the time timeline with Alpha 17 and the fact that the server started to be all crazy we just decided we were going to go full creative mode uh, for the last week and finish the painting with creative mode um, but everything else was built um, legit so because uh, this is also, like I said, the storage room, and I had boxes full of iron. These two are full of, and, because, and also the ones downstairs. <laughs> these got painted. Uh, these are all filled with rock, but I used up all the rock here. There's a, a mine I have out in the desert to get all my sand. Um, didn't always use that, but most of the time I used just sand from the area. This is always a bit goofy. I think some of the light causes some of the issues with like all the torches deal or make the frame rate drop a little bit. I wanted to show you something upstairs. This room here is pretty much empty. Yeah, so this floor is all room for refugees and survivors and more storage. Maybe some rooms go in here. But you recognize this room if you've played this particular uh tower multiple times. This is up here. This is the next feature we're going to show you. A chunk. And each one of these can be closed off to the floor below it. I should put in some murder holes and some ways to defend against the previous floors, because otherwise you'd just be kind of trapped up here. Hmm, so this is a bit bright. A bit brighter than I wanted. If I turn off my light, that might help. This is what I call the war room. I got this idea from somebody, I think I was on Quora. And I cannot remember the name. Um, that's really unfortunate. But if you're out there and you're still watching, thank you for the idea. 
So this is just a basic representation of my castle. Uh, you can see over here, the, this is that bridge with the dragon underneath it. These are these corner buildings. These are those three buildings that are over there. Uh, that's the Dan Phoenix building. These are the different walls. This is Higashi Tower and Dark Mist Tower. Anyway, the idea is that these lights show you if something is there. And there was going to be more lights to, sh you know, it's just I didn't have time. Now this light will actually light up um, if there's a zombie out on the one side of the Dan Phoenix building. Um, can't really show you if it's not on, but the wiring, like I said, um, goes... Do, 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 do. Maybe I'll even split this up into different components because this is a pretty big tower. Anyway, this wire goes down, that wire goes out um, and down and goes all the way through that building over to the main little door that uh, I'll show you in a bit. But yeah, the other one connects over there. Um, we'll show you that later. Um, I think I'm going to end this part of this tour as soon as we get to the top of this building. Um, so this area here is a nasty area in the game. Uh, the crane itself actually comes in right here and the crane lays across over there but of course it doesn't look like this any you know anymore. You can kind of see the remnants of this one wall. I decided to just leave that in here. These block a lot of the sleepers spawns um, so that's good. And da, 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 da. this is sort of a kitchen. It's laid out really funny because, like I said, there's a sleeper spot here and there and there. Um, some of these were original walls and stuff, but it's all kind of weird. I was going to put stairs in here, but it's not a thing right now. This was going to be some sort of water fountain, but not likely going to happen. Um, this is a tower to a little turret. This is what I originally called the floor like the donjon because it was um, well it was a floor that was at the top of the tallest tower at the time of you know the keep. Uh, anyways I put a small garden up here a couple of them just to kind of keep things going. Added um, eventually added these battlements here so you could in theory you know fight whoever is down there with a sniper rifle. Do, 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 do. It's like so because you can zoom in with your sniper rifle and you know take off you know fight people down there <laughs> shall we say these battlements aren't too bad um, and then I guess in reality you could probably actually lean but there's no leaning in the game so anyway um, we'll get to the throne room which is up there and that's my radio communication system up there and then this little room up there that one, there's a little computer that uh, scans this for signals on this one. There's a video on that. A small little one. There's that little tower there. This is where I was going to make a big bedroom. Uh, well, like I said, de facto done. I can't do much more work without the server going haywire. Some good views over here though. But we'll go out, climb up to this little tower here. Um, I had solar panels up here, but then I decided to move them off to the side because I was going to build a small little tower up here. Maybe some turrets or something. But yeah, good view. See all the other side towers. This is an interesting tower. We'll get to that. But I'm going to break this into pieces. This has already been 30, 40 minutes. So if you're interested to see more, we'll go do a small tour of this building over there. Um, down in there, because there's a lot to show you um, and talk about, I guess, because it's been so dang long and it's such a big castle. Um, so if you're interested in the castle design aspect of it and my commentary on it, you know, keep watching, watching them all. But I'm going to make a short featurette, little arrow slots to fire through. Um, this is bulletproof glass if you're not new, uh, used to the game. Uh, so it's actually quite well protected. It's not like they can just shoot through this type of glass. Uh, it's pretty pretty hard. And so yeah, you, once again, you can you know take some shots at if various other positions were compromised, like this one here. You know, help defend that. Uh, this these I put in on most doors so that you could probably you know help defend against these doors. 
And then ultimately you come up here and you have this little tower, which I changed up the uh, chicolations and the, well, I guess the crenals. No, the merlons a bit so that, uh, you know, it was just a little bit different and you'd fire through them because there's other designs. There's lots of designs you can do for your battlements and some of them have like an arrow slot and then a full block over here and here. Um, I just didn't really go for that in my game. See the city kind of over here, it's kind of nice. And over there, there's, this is a, was a really interesting seed because there was four cities all in close proximity. To be honest though, really only two cities is probably enough, of this size anyway. Um, yeah, I tried to isolate this area, gave it a little spiral staircase, which is, if you're in the game, fully supported due to these, uh, these plates here and these corner plates. This is technically kind of solid, um, but that's that's only for you structural integrity nerds out there, kind of like me. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's sort of this room. I'm going to probably do some feature shots of this at some point. Um, but actually, maybe I will call it here because then I'll do a more another episode of this like later, so... Anyways, thanks for watching. I will do some more episodes of my commentary on this, very on the specifics of this place because I am not done by far. Probably go another, uh, maybe an hour. I don't think so because there's a couple of uh, more interesting features near Higashi and down in the building down there. So, yeah, if you want to see the commentary, check out the other commentary videos. Otherwise, you can just watch a little featurette that I'll try to link in the description here. So, anyways. Hit that like button if you want to see more content by me in the future, um, you know, subscribe. And uh, I guess I will see you in other videos. Bye-bye.